Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to four replays coming at you. Starting off with Bacon Gaming in Sim in the Lat Torn, the Rip Torn, the Rip and Tear until it is done. Starting off in the midst of battle, as I do have quite a bit of ground to cover today. Uh, unlike Bacon Gaming, who is mostly going to prowl about the city skirts here in this sim battle. Facing off against the Italians and whoever else, the Swedes able to join in whatever sim battles they want to, I suppose. It's not like we're using historical matchmaker in this case. In any event, the Delat Torn is something I have yet to get my hands onto, and I hope that I'm using the right name for this thing. The Swedish tanks are still very confusing for me, but if you would be so kind as to correct my errors in the comments, I really do appreciate that. That's often how I learn these days, by saying something wrong and being corrected by someone on the internet, and I do appreciate that, truly. As Bacon goes about the town, I think about uh, a couple uh, of people that, uh, well, you know what, we won't even talk about that right now. <laughs> Let's watch this sim match, but I realized that most of the negativity I was seeing on the War Thunder Reddit comes from literally two people, so screw those guys. Anyway, <laughs> here is Bacon. And he has been delating, he has been deleting enemy after enemy. He is going to get seven kills in this sim battle, and this is not doing sim justice. The beauty of War Thunder is on full display in these sim battles. I've turned off the UI because I don't like the way it looks when it says replenishing the first stage ammo rack in the replay. Gaijin still doesn't know how to have a clean UI in the replay system, although they have done a fantastic job of cleaning up the UI in, um, in battles with the consolidation of things down into the bottom left in ground vehicles that really helps a lot I'm looking forward to seeing more UI improvements and it really is nice to see these quality of life adjustments to the game that should really help out for quite some time blap <laughs> it is a lot of fun to watch bacon just completely delete these enemies with full sparks mode and the UI turned away. You're not really missing out on much in terms of UI in sim. Uh, again, the beauty of War Thunder on full display, the camera position closer to the commander's hatch than anything else, and a lot of the camera exploits and such that just become old hat and a necessary tool for RB and arcade players is set aside for a more scenic and realistic approach. Of course, a Swedish armored vehicle firing its gun in anger is not itself a realistic approach, <laughs> but you gotta let this fat hussy dance somehow, and if you have to make up some historical frame to do it, then by golly, that's what you do. Pasta Boy comes in counting on his armor to protect him, but the furious Swedish maiden defends her chastity with a flaming bum and an autoloader that means she'll come out first on the reload rate. Tracking an, air an airplane, did I mention that Bacon gets an air kill in this match? No, I didn't because he doesn't. But it is always fun to dream. Anyway, that just about does it for Bacon Gaming 
in this replay he of course has a YouTube channel that is far more polished and popular than my own where he covers things that are coming to the game and does the best helicopter reviews that I've seen so there's that QWERTY's 69 by the way uh, I've been getting into helicopters once again with the Apache Patan and I've been having uh, well it started out as being very stressful because I didn't know what to focus on and then I just ended up being moderately stressed out and really growing in my skills especially in terms of tactical awareness because death comes so quickly in helicopters in general and at 10.0 matchmaker specifically QWERTY's doing his part to bring swift death to enemies here in this replay where I've started you off right after he got into his forward firing position as you're used to seeing with Visky lots of kills an aggressive but effective and fairly well balanced but leaning on the point of maximum carnage playstyle and in this case the BA-11 armored car event vehicle that Russia has access to uh, they're called USSR but more and more now they're specifically uh, Russia when you get into the higher tiers although of course there's some cooperation before the collapse of the Soviet Union or collaboration yeah whatever in any event Visky more or less on his own initiative picking up six kills with many more to come in this action-packed replay uh, this v this sorry replay alone is really worthy of some quality editing in a standalone video all by itself uh, which is why I've always encouraged Visky to get into making videos I really think that he would have a great amount of material. I love his playstyle. He's always entertaining to watch. And uh, you know, maybe he could send some replays to somebody that can really spend more time polishing things because I really do love featuring him on the channel. Don't get me wrong by any means. Uh, but I sort of feel like he deserves some polish on those replay videos too. I'd, I'd love to see what somebody uh, would do if they put sort of a, a dollar plays level of polish into the video I guess then it'd be another dollar plays video <laughs> which is always a lot of fun to watch there are a lot of War Thunder YouTubers that I'll watch in the background as Visky now decides to back out uh, exposing only the minimum amount of his vehicle, keeping the cabin crew safe, and basically assuring himself at least one shot's worth of survivability, as well as keeping most of his mobility protected. Not a bad position, BA-11, not bad at all, and if the enemy can't manage to spot you and take you down in time, then you could stay infected in that area for quite some time. And with that line of monologue, I fear I've lost the topic. So <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about before, but uh, here we are. With eight kills and counting, this portion of the map is always fruitful for someone that can lock down this area early on, which is why you generally see so many team members piling into this zone uh, but if you're not aggressive and putting yourself in a good position to take down the enemy then Visky will just show up and take all your kills. Now would be a fantastic time for some pilot to fly in and fill Visky's light roof armor with a bunch of 20 millimeter holes but such elements uh, are not coordinating strategy to that point at this time which no doubt is appreciated by our tanker friend now six wheels roll no eight ten is that right am I doing the math right yeah you've got four eight 
10 wheels on the ground. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. 10 rolling and 1 trolling as Visky makes his way along the boulevard. The most deadly chauffeur in all of War Thunder, if you ask my humble opinion. Uh, and <laughs> I'm just completely full of it today. Uh, but I'm not done being strange. It's late. I've got a replay video to make. I had an extremely stressed out day today. I think I just ended up drinking too much caffeine and my heart was just like... Uh, beating a lot faster than it normally does you know scared rabbit syndrome and it really messed with my um with my emotions i guess i was really touchy i was really edgy uh aggressive and you know when you have a <laughs> when you have a house with nothing but a one and a half year old toddler and a almost three year old toddler both of whom are girls and very um invested in my attention and also getting into shenanigans being on edge is not a good thing so I needed to find a way to deal with that <laughs> I finally figured out that I think it was because of something I drank I, I think I had a, a little bit too much caffeine and it was it was messing with my heart rate and that really put me into like a fight or flight mode not cool so now I'm just like really tired and not quite so wired and perhaps armed with information. <laughs> we'll have to see. In any event, I sort of feel a little bit uh, cloistered as well. It's so weird, like I never leave my house anyway, but I will go to church once a week. And um, I used to actually go twice a week because I would go Wednesday night as well. But I stopped doing that because I just uh, more and more I need to be able to take care of the girls so my wife doesn't have to worry about anything. She's very pregnant and very busy at the post office for most of the day and then she's exhausted six days a week and tired on the seventh day when we go to church. <laughs> so it's uh, it's rough on her if I need her to take over for a few hours or half a day while I catch on my sleep while I catch up on my sleep or whatever and bat your eyes and Visky's finished his 13 kills and an incredible match now tiny German picking up his first kill in the mouse does German house that was thicker <laughs> than every other ground vehicle in War Thunder. The famous mouse, the no longer available to new players mouse that's coming soon, TM, to a special event near you. Uh, no doubt some sort of ancillary prize to a crafting grind that nobody asked for, but you know what? It is what it is. There are rumors going around now that uh, Operation Suffer is coming back soon and I actually prefer the um, what's it called the construction type events the build a bear events because if you have more time in a day you can do more grinding and if you don't have a lot of time you can still make a little bit of progress you don't have to worry about playing the game for two three four hours in a day to unlock a medal or have to grind all of that the next day and then you're also not limited to spending what is it like two three weeks maybe no wait it's more right it's around 20 days for most of those uh, medals events picking up his second kill and coming to a cut in the video there's a lot of driving around for the mouse and that can be something that's great for conversation but it's not all that good for brevity and such I am interested in tonight because I'm trying to squeeze four replays into a one and a half replay sized hat as it were. But rumors of the mouse event, I feel like it's overdue. I really would have preferred to see that event come very quickly on the heels 
of the mouse being removed just sort of as a sign of good faith and that Gaijin isn't uh, making a hasty decision that could have long-term effects but uh, are you laughing yet? <laughs> I mean, this is War Thunder, right? We're talking about the same game here. Uh, and this replay is clearly from update 1.97, where the fire effects are gorgeous, the explosions are updated, and the sparks are with us. Beautiful. Four kills in the mouse, always appreciated. And a bulwark, a mobile air quotes <laughs> bunker for German allied vehicles as long as they're willing to allow the mouse an opportunity to advance in its own time she a hefty girl but she get the job done and even though as we all know at 7-7 there are more things that can punch through the mouse with ease from almost any facing then there are things which can't. Even so, that gun still slaps hard when it manages to slip through, and the mouse does have its place. If all you do is learn how to angle appropriately, your survivability can be a force to be reckoned with even before the two cannons start firing. In any event, here we are, wrapping up the replay video. This time with you has just flown by. Maybe I'll be able to make another replay video tonight. That would be so exciting because I have over 40 replay um, replays recorded on my hard drive. And uh, I'd like to be able to turn all of those into videos. I really don't want to... Uh, have to decide which ones are worth showing but rather just to to find something interesting in everything that you guys send me that I possibly can and feature as many of you as many times as possible give you that great exposure to a broader audience uh, and maybe even hopefully uh, as was for me inspire you to make your own videos and they will start off horrible and they don't have to get much better to get up to the quality you see here <laughs> in any event this is star destroyer 3 i've gotten a few replays from him and this one is a bit older welcome to nostalgia thunder uh, from a few months ago at least we have the m10 and i think a little bit of server lag there as well on that topic, does anybody else feel like the tracks are just a little bit more slippery in War Thunder than they should be? They don't seem to have the grip that I would like to see them having, but uh, you know what? It's close enough for Jazz, and it's definitely something you can get used to. Star Destroyer being useful for his team. Again, we're going to have some cuts here for brevity's sake, but look at that beautiful explosion. I guess it wasn't so old that we didn't have the beautiful sparks that I've gotten so accustomed to seeing in War Thunder. Maybe it's just from less than a month ago. I I'm tired. I get confused. <laughs> Grandpa needs his nap, okay? I am I'm super sleepy. But, uh, whew, excuse me. I guess I shouldn't go around calling myself Grandpa. That's, uh, that's a little bit callous toward those of you who actually are grandparents. One of the neat things about War Thunder is that... Uh, is that an enemy tank? Yep. <laughs> Hello, Governor. Good boy. Uh, now that's an explosion. But it's nice to see the different age groups involved in this game. It's not just a... Uh, it's not just, uh, what are the kids playing these days? It used to be Fortnite. I don't know what they've flocked to now. But uh, it's not just some game where you're going to see eight and nine-year-olds. In fact, you see a lot less of the younger generation than I'm used to seeing in games like Call of Duty and such. And I think that the amount of information required and the brutal learning curve really has a lot to do with that. Uh, it seems like War Thunder's audience is a little bit older Uh beyond the fact that uh, there's not a lot of uh, kids in this game. Even the adults seem uh, a little bit older than average. And of course, 
everybody's welcome. It's great to see a game that can have such a broad range of people playing it and uh, that all comes out in the conversations and the chat and the maturity level. <laughs> and with that, if you've been listening and you enjoy uh, the way that I share my thoughts with you all as we watch completely unrelated action that is itself inspiring happening on the screen. What I'd like to, what I mean to say is, if you'd like to connect with me and uh, the other members of the Toshio Thunder Zone Discord, there's a link for you in the description of this video. That is the best place to share your replay with me. There's even a channel set aside for that, and I highly encourage you to do sh do so. Love to see new faces as I see every day. And Star Destroyer 3 is going to find a new face in his respawn, or perhaps back in the hangar. Hard to say, but it was. Oh, actually, I remember now. He respawns in a Corsair, but you know what? That's a story for another time. In any event that wraps it up for this replay video and i have enjoyed my time with you and i will catch you guys in the next video bye bye